Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing very well. So in today's video, I wanted to show you how I made this really cute strawberry bunny sweater. This is a more intermediate project which uses a pixel graph and half double crochet. So make sure that you are fairly confident in that, but I will get into explaining it in more depth anyway. So let's get into it. So I just thought I'd start off by explaining the graph. So here we have the design that I'm going to be using today, which is the bunny graph. It is 44 stitches across and 48 rows in total. So I just thought I would show you that. But to make things a little bit easier and to break it down, I'm going to be showing you an example graph, um, which is basically just a simple square design. And this can apply to any graph design you have that you want to make into a jumper and adjust to your size. So for example, this square graph that I've made is 10 stitches across and 14 rows. However, if you are right-handed, the 10 will be on the leftmost square and the one will be on the rightmost square. So each square represents a stitch. For example, at, along the bottom, you can see that there are 10 squares. That represents how many chains that you're going to need to make, plus an extra chain for the turning chain. And then you would be doing 14 rows of your stitch. Um, and that is the numbers going um, up the side of the graph vertically. So if your graph is, for example, the bunny graph that we're going to be using is 44 stitches across, that means that we'll be making a chain of 44 plus one, and then we'll be doing 48 rows. So first of all, I'm going to give you some example measurements and then later on I will be showing you my actual measurements and what I did so that you can follow that pattern along exactly. Um, but this is just an example, so apply it um, based on your measurements. So first of all, you're going to want to measure the circumference of your waist. So the example um, measurement that I've got is 40 inches. You're then going to want to measure the length you want the jumper to be. So that's from about the collarbone downwards. Um, and let's say that you want the length of this to also be 40 inches. You're then going to want to take your waist measurement, divide it by two, and that is 20 inches. So that means that our front panel is going to be 20 inches across. You're then going to want to make a chain that equals 20 inches. So whatever that chain um, amount is, is going to be 20 inches. It's very important that when you're making your first chain, that it is an even number because otherwise it's going to be difficult to place it, place the graph exactly into the middle of your front panel. Let's say 20 inches for the front panel equals 40 chains. For the height of the jumper, you're then going to want to just make a sample swatch using the yarn of your choice. And you're just gonna to wanna to make one row of the stitch of your choice. For example, in this tutorial, I'm gonna be doing half double crochet. You're going to want to do a row of half double crochet and then measure the height of that row. So for example, a row of half double crochet could be two inches in height. You're going to want to take the length of the jumper you want, so I said 40 inches, and divide it by the height of one row, which was two inches, which means that you will divide 40 by two, which gives you 20 rows you need in total. So, so far we have 40 chains going across and 20 rows going up for our front panel. So how do we place a graph into our jumper measurement? So you're going to want to take your front panel chain number, which was 40 chains, and then you're going to want to take away the amount of stitches in your graph going across. So in the example, that is 10 stitches. So you're going to want to do 40 minus 10, which is 30. You're then going to want to divide 30 by 2, which is 15. And this number is giving you what's, how many stitches are added either side of the example graph. So we will that now be adding 15 stitches to the left of the graph and 15 stitches to the right of the graph. So 10 stitches in the row now becomes 40 with 15 either side. And I'm going to show you on screen how that looks when you add it. So now we need to add how many rows we want for our jumper and accompany this with how many rows we have in the example graph. So remember, we have 20 rows that we want to make for our front panel, but we have 14 rows in the graph. So how do we combine this? You want to minus 14 from 20. So 20 minus 14 is six. And then you want to divide six by two, which is three. And this gives you the number of how many stitches you need to add at the top and at the bottom. So you will be adding an extra three stitches to the top of the graph 
where the vertical numbers sit and three stitches at the bottom of the graph where the vertical numbers sit. So you will be adding six stitches to the graph, three at the top and three at the bottom. So just a couple of notes to add. It's important to know that the larger the size you are, the smaller the graph design is going to appear onto the jumper because you are adding a lot more stitches and you are not increasing the amount of stitches in the graph. I haven't figured out a way yet to ensure that the graph um, size stays the same throughout a range of sizes. So the other measurements that you will need to take is from the top of your arm to your wrist and that is the length of the sleeve that you want and then you're also going to want to take the circumference around your arm and you want to extend this measurement if you want an oversized sleeve or if you want it to be kind of skin tight then you just want to keep it the exact same um, as the actual circumference of your arm. I'm going to link all the left-handed and right-handed graphs in the description. So for this jumper I'm going to be using five different colours from the Drops Snow Unicolor yarn. This is a chunky um, yarn and I've got it in the colour off-white, sage green, dark brown, nougat and powder pink. I'm also using a 6.5 millimeter hook and then I'm using some scissors, a sewing needle, some measuring tape and I've got about four stitch markers. So if you would like to make the exact same size that I'm making, I have a 38 inch waist for a loose oversized fit jumper. So that means that dividing that by two makes my front panel 19 inches in width. When I made um, my first lot of chains, which I've got here, that equaled to about 52 chains. And then for the length of the jumper, I wanted it to be about 19 inches. I did a row of half double crochet with this hook and the yarn and I measured the height of one row which was about 0.4 inches. I have about 48 rows in my graph so I didn't really have to adjust the graph for the length of the jumper um, because that was going to be enough. So with my 52 chains that I've already made and then my 44 stitches in my graph, I took 44 away from 52, which gives you eight. And then I divided eight by two, which is four, which means that four stitches need to be placed either side of the graph to make it equal. So I had four extra stitches on the left and four extra stitches on the right. And as you can see on the graph, um, in blue is where I've marked the four extra stitches on each side. So if you are making the same size that I'm making, then this is basically the exact graph that we're gonna be following. But you may need to adjust this according to your measurement. Once you have the amount of chains you need, remember that it needs to be an even number. You're going to add another chain for the turning chain, and then we are going to be making our first row. So for my first row, I'm going to be making 23 half double crochets, and then on the 23rd, I'm going to be changing colour. So I'm not going to complete the 23rd stitch. Um, I'm going to yarn over, insert the hook into the second stitch from the hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, three stitches on the hook, yarn over, pull through all three loops, yarn over, insert the hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through all three loops. So I'm going to do this now until I have 22 half double crochets and then on the 23rd I'm going to stop once I have my three stitches on the hook and then we are going to change colour there. So I've just done 22 half double crochets and now I'm going to start my 23rd. So I'm just going to start it as normal and I'm going to stop once I have my three loops on the hook. And then I'm going to grab my new colour, which on the graph is the dark brown, and I'm going to make a slip knot with that. And then I'm going to finish the half double crochet with the brown. So I'm going to pull through all three loops with the new colour, like this. And now on the graph, it is telling me that I need to do six half double crochets in brown, and then on the seventh, uh, sixth stitch, I need to change to cream. So I'm going to do six half double crochets, and I'm going to carry both um, little tails across. So that's one, two, and last one, six, and we're going to finish the sixth stitch with the cream. So yarn over, pull through all three. So for the rest of the row, I now just only need to do 
one half double crochet into each stitch I don't have any more color changes so I'm just going to weave the end in of this um, stitch for a little bit and then I'm going to cut the yarn but it's just one half double crochet now all the way across and um, so I will meet you back when I reach the end of the row and we're going to start row two so I'm now going to start row two and I'm not going to chain one I'm just going to turn the work so the graph is telling me that I need to make 13 half double crochets and then on the 13th I'm going to change to brown so I'm going to do that now so I've just started the 13th stitch and now I'm going to change to brown so I'm going to make a slip knot so the graph is telling me that I need to make 11 half double crochets using the brown so I'm going to finish the 13th one with the brown and then I'm going to carry both of the tails over because after the next 11 stitches I'm going to be changing back to cream and I'm going to be doing four cream stitches and changing back to brown so I need the cream further along the row so I'm just going to carry it over so I'm going to do 11 half double crochets in brown So I'm now finishing the 11th stitch and I'm going to switch back to cream so I'm just basically twisting the colours back over so we now have the brown sitting at the back and the working yarn on the front. I'm going to finish the 11th stitch in brown with the cream and then I'm going to make four half double crochets in cream and then switch back to brown. Fourth one I'm going to switch back to brown. So I'm now going to do 11 half double crochets in brown and then I'm going to switch to cream. Eleven, and now I'm going to switch to cream. And then for the rest of the row I'm just basically going to be doing one half double crochet in uh, each stitch in cream so there's no colour changes. So this is what the row is looking like so far once we flip it back to the right side. So I'm just basically going to continue working from the graph, um, adding um, the new colours where it needs to be. So for example, at row 6 I'm going to be adding pink and then at row 10 I will be adding um, the green and, and so on and so forth. So it's literally the exact same process as uh, adding any new colour like we did in row 1. We just add it with a slip knot. Um, and it just means that you have more colours on the go and you may need to carry some across with you if you notice that you need it further down the row. Um, I have a more in-depth tutorial of colour changes which I'm going to link down below as well if you kind of want a look to brush up a bit more on colour changing, especially multiple colour changes in a row. Um, but yeah, hopefully you get a good idea of that. Um, and so I'm basically just going to complete the rest of the graph now up until row 48. Um, so I will come back when that is all finished. So I've just finished my final row, that is row 48. I've finished on the wrong side. So I'm just going to now chain one and fasten off. So we're now going to be working on the back panel and the back panel is exactly the same as the front panel in terms of how many chains to make and how many rows to do. So I'm just going to be making a chain of 52 plus one with my cream yarn and then I'm just going to work down the row making one half double crochet into each stitch and then I'm going to turn the work and for row two I'm just going to do one half double crochet in each stitch and I'm just doing this in cream um, all the way up um, so it's basically just 48 rows of half double crochet and um, so I will meet you back once I have got my second panel So I've just finished my second panel and I've just fastened off. 
So the next step is going, we're going to be joining the panels together by the shoulders. So you're going to want to work out how um, large you want your neck hole to be. So my panel across measures 20 inches, which means that at the center or where my neck is will be at 10 inches. So I just measured across my shoulders with the measuring tape and then I decided that I was going to stop the shoulder section at about 6 inches in and then the neck hole in the centre would be about 8 inches. So you're going to want to make sure that both of your panels have the wrong side on the outside. So as you can see here, here's the wrong side of the tapestry that we made and this is the wrong side of the back panel. So as you can see on the inside we have all of the neat edges and then you are going to work out um, how many stitches you need to crochet in and then where you stop. So for me, because I wanted a 6 inch shoulder uh, section and then an 8 inch neck hole, that meant that I will be crocheting from the edge about 15 inches in and then stopping there and fastening off and the same on the other side, so 15 stitches on either side um, and then what's left in the middle is not attached. So I'm grabbing my main colour that I'm using and I'm going to attach the hook into the first stitch of the front panel like so and then I'm grabbing the back panel and I'm going into the first stitch of the back panel like this and then I'm going to attach my uh, main colour slip knot onto the hook and I'm going to pull through both stitches with the new slip knot and then just chain one to make sure that it's secure. So going into the same stitch I'm going to make a single crochet into uh, through both panels so I'm going into the first stitch the same stitch where we attached it and the same stitch where we attached it on the back panel. So I'm picking up both stitches and also the tails and I'm going to be making a single crochet through both like that. And then again I'm going to repeat that all the way across until I hit 15 stitches. So I'm going into the next stitch of the front panel and the next stitch of the back panel making a single crochet and I'm repeating this all the way across so, so into the next stitch of the first panel and into the next stitch of the back panel and then single crochet. So I'm going to continue this now until I've done 15 um, single crochets. So once you've done your 15 single crochets or however many you wanted um, the shoulder part to be and the neck hole to be, you're then going to just chain one and fasten off and then you're just going to want to repeat this step on the other side and I'm actually going to flip the work the other way so that I'm working from left to right from the edge. You can count back 15 stitches here and then start from the, the centre and then work across, however that gives you a tail here at the end that you will need to weave in, whereas if you flip it the other way you'll have a tail here in the neck hole and then when we crochet around the neck hole we can weave these ends in, so I just personally prefer to do it that way but there's no rules. Grab my next, uh, grab the first stitch of the front panel, technically we're now at the back panel but first stitch of the back panel and then pull the slip knot through both stitches and chain one to fasten that and then I'm going to make 15 single crochets across here. Okay then I'm just going to fasten it off. And then that is the shoulder parts all connected. So we're now going to be working on the sleeves. So you're going to want to measure around the top part of your arm um, where it fits more comfortably. Um, so if you want a really tight sleeve then obviously we'll just measure a tight fitting around the top of your arm. But I want my sleeve to be quite oversized. So I got about 16 inches and that was quite a comfortable fit for me, like an oversized sleeve. And then once we get down to sort of the middle um, elbow part, we will be decreasing so it will fit the arm a little bit more in a flattering way. So with my main colour, I'm going to be making a chain that fits about 16 inches. So 
So I've done 47 chains for 16 inches and then I'm going to add an extra chain for the turning chain. So I've got 48. And I'm just going to make one half double crochet into the second chain from the hook. And then one half double crochet into each uh, chain across. Okay, so once you have reached the end of your chain, you are going to turn the work, just like we did for the back panel and the front panel. You're going to turn the work and you're just going to make one half double crochet into each stitch across. And I'm going to continue to make rows and rows of half double crochet until my work reaches from about the top of my arm to my elbow. So I'm just going to keep doing rows and rows until it reaches my elbow. And then I'll come back and we will I will show you how to do the decrease um, alternating row. So I've just finished 15 rows of half double crochet and that reached to about 8 inches which reached to my elbow. So we're now going to be working from the elbow to the wrist and we're going to be alternating between a decrease row and a normal row of half double crochet. So for my next row which will be row 16 I'm going to turn the work and I'm going to make a decrease row. So I'm going to be skipping the first stitch and I'm going to make a half double crochet into the second. And then I'm going to make a half double crochet into each stitch in all the way across until I reach roughly the middle. Okay, so once you have reached roughly the middle, you're going to repeat the same thing. You're going to skip the next stitch and then make a half double crochet into the next stitch. And then I'm going to continue to make one half double crochet into each stitch across and I'm going to stop until I have two stitches left. Once you have two stitches left you're going to skip the next stitch and make a half double crochet into the last stitch. Okay. And that is what a decreased row looks like. So we've now just taken away three stitches from our row um, and that helps to shape the arm um, sleeve a little bit better. So for the next row I'm just going to be turning the work and making one half double crochet into each stitch across and then the following row I will repeat the decrease row where I make a decrease at either end and also one in the middle and I'm going to continue alternating between a decrease row and a normal row until I have reached my wrist. So I will come back and show you what to do after I have reached the wrist section. So I have just finished my last row. I ended up doing 15 rows where I alternated between the decrease row and the normal row. So in total I have 30 rows and that has equaled to about 15 and a half inches. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fasten off. So I'm just going to chain one and cut the yarn. Okay, and then I'm going to make another sleeve using the exact same um, pattern that I've used and then I will come back and I'll show you how we attach the sleeves to the jumper. Okay, so I now have my sleeve lined directly with the shoulder section of the jumper. So as you can see here, I have placed three stitch markers to just kind of line everything up neatly. So you want to make sure that the top of your sleeve, so the widest part of your sleeve, is lined up in the middle with the top of the shoulder so you could place a stitch marker here just to indicate that and then you're just going to want to line it up further down the front of the jumper place a stitch marker there and then the same for over here just so that everything's spaced out nicely and then i'm going to slip stitch down this side to attach everything so i'm going to insert the hook into this first loop here and this first loop here of the sleeve and then i'm going to take my slip knot and I'm going to pull the slip knot through both and chain one to attach it and then I'm going to make a slip stitch uh, through both panels. So I'm going into the next stitch of the front panel and the next stitch of the back panel and I'm going to make a slip stitch like that and then into sort of the next stitch of the front panel and the next stitch of the back panel then make a slip stitch and I'm just continuing this all the way up 
making slip stitches so that everything gets attached. Okay, so once you have got to the end of the top of the sleeve, you're just going to want to chain one and fasten off. Like that, and then pull tight. And then I'm just going to do the exact same thing for the other sleeve. I'm just going to attach it in the same way with the stitch markers and then slip stitch across. And then I will show you how we slip stitch the seams together. Okay, so now that I have attached the shoulders together, I'm now going to be attaching the side seam of the sleeve and the side seam of the side of the jumper together in one go. So I'm basically going to be repeating the exact same thing I did for the shoulder, except I'm going to start in the sleeve corner. So I'm going to insert my hook into sort of the top um, stitch of the sleeve and then the back top stitch of the sleeve, so like this, and then create a slip knot with your working yarn. And then I'm just going to pull that through both stitches and then chain one to attach it. And then I'm going to slip stitch all the way down the seam of the sleeve and then once I reach the end um, at the corner of the kind of bottom of the armpit I'm going to just work all the way down. So I'm basically just doing the exact same thing, slip stitching through both panels all the way down to the bottom hem of the jumper. Okay, so I've just reached the bottom of the jumper. I'm now just going to chain one and fasten off. And then I'm just going to repeat the exact same steps on the other side of the jumper. And then I'll come back and I will show you how I'm going to do the neck hole. Okay, so we are now going to be working on the neck hole. So you're going to want to flip your work now so that everything is on the right side up. And you're going to start in one side of the collar. Um, it doesn't matter which side. You're going to attach the yarn at one side, so I'm just going to insert my hook and pull the slip knot through and chain one to attach it. So at this stage I'm going to be making a decrease row just to make the neck hole cinch in a little bit better and that makes the neckline a little bit more flattering and put together. You don't have to do this but um, I just am. So you can decrease however many stitches you want. I'm probably going to decrease about every six stitches, so not too much, because I still want the neck hole to be loose. I don't want it to be like a turtleneck or it's really tight. Um, however, if you want your neck hole to be quite tight, then you could maybe decrease every three stitches or every two stitches. Um, but I'm just going to do every six stitches. So I'm going to start off by making a single crochet to the next stitch. So that's one. And then I'm going to do another five single crochets and then I'm going to make a decrease. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then I'm going to make a decrease, so I'm just going to insert the hook into the next stitch and pull up a loop and then insert the hook into the next stitch and pull up a loop you should have three loops on the hook and then i'm just going to yarn over and pull through all three loops and then i'm going to repeat that process again so six single crochets and then a decrease so insert the hook pull up a loop insert the hook into the next stitch and pull up a loop and then yarn over pull through all three loops Okay, and then I'm going to repeat that process all the way around. Don't worry if you get to the end and you might have like a few stitches left. Just make single crochets in them and then I will meet you back um, once we get to the end. Okay, so now I have reached the other side of the shoulder. I'm just going to slip stitch back into where we first attached the yarn, like that, okay? 
Okay, so I'm now just going to start my next few rows where I'm just gonna kind of build up the height on the collar area. So I'm just going to chain one, and then I'm just going to start single crocheting into each stitch all the way around. So I've chained one, I'm just gonna start my next single crochet into the next stitch, and then I'm gonna keep continuing single crochets into each stitch all the way around. So after your last single crochet, you're then just going to want to sink, slip stitch into that slip stitch, okay? And then chain one to start the next row, and then you're just going to skip the chain, and you're going to start making single crochets again into each stitch all the way around. And I'm just gonna repeat that process for a few rows until I'm happy with the height on the neckline, and then I will come back once I have reached my uh, final single crochet again of my final row, and then I'll show you how we fasten off. So I've just finished my last single crochet for the neck hole. I ended up doing four rows of single crochet in total, including that very first row that we did. And once you have reached the end of the row and you've done your last single crochet, you're going to skip the slip stitch and the chain one, and you're gonna slip stitch into that first single crochet again, like that. And then I'm just going to chain one and fasten off. For the sleeves, I'm going to be making four rows of single crochet, just like I did for the neck hole. Um, and I'm not gonna be making a decrease row, so I'm just going to start as normal and then make four rows of um, single crochet. So for the cuffs, I'm going to be using pink yarn, so I've got my slip knot ready. And I'm going to attach it at the sort of seam line here that we have. So I'm just finding that stitch there. Like that putting the slip knot through and chain one and then I'm just going to single crochet all around into each stitch Okay, so I've reached my last single crochet and now I'm just going to slip stitch back into the space where we attached it. Like that. Okay, and then for the next round, this is the round that I'll be repeating for three more rounds. I'm going to chain one and then I'm going to single crochet into the next stitch and then single crochet into each stitch all the way around. So I'm going to repeat that for three more rounds and then once I have reached the last single crochet of the final round I'm going to skip the slip stitch, skip the chain one and just slip stitch into that first single crochet and then chain one and fasten off. And then for the hem of the jumper I just did a decrease row so the exact same as the collar I just attached the yarn at one side of the hem of the jumper and then I just did six single crochets and then I did a decrease stitch and then I repeated that all the way around six single crochets decrease six single crochets decrease all the way around and then I slip stitched back into the beginning and then fastened off and then all you have left to do is to weave in the ends and then the jumper is all finished. And this is what the final result is looking like. I hope you all enjoyed making your bunny sweaters. If you did, then please tag me on Instagram so I can see your results. And if you have any ideas of what you'd like me to make next, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.